Welcome South Asheboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house. I trust you've had a great day in the Lord. I tell you that message this morning preached. I was expecting uh, sinners to come running down to this altar this morning. That was a message about being saved. And, you know, that's what, that's what the gospel is about, that Jesus Christ come to save sinners. Praise God. Let's uh, continue praying for the lost. I know there was lost in the house this morning that needed to be in the altar. Just trust that they will come back and they'll come to the altar to be convicted of their sins and be forgiven of their sins. Yes. Good to have Brother Nelson with us tonight. He's yes. always a pleasure when he come, our brother comes to visit with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, got our pledge cards for the evangelist quarters. Evangelist quarters out. Uh, so you can either get a card or you've got an envelope. If you want to put an envelope and give, put an offering plate and give such a branch. We have a revival CD sign up sheet. If you want to sign up for CDs for the revival, uh, just give us a little time to get them done, but uh, mm-hmm. if you'll sign up for them, we'll get some CD revival, uh, revival CDs uh, out to you. As we open in prayer, let's continue to remember pray, uh, pray for Brother Wayne Rouse, that God was touch him in his body. Pray for Brother Ed and that sister Eileen Reeder. They both are they're going downhill. Their mm-hmm. health is uh, declining quickly, so pray mm-hmm. for them. God's able to touch them. Mm-hmm. Continue praying for Robert Guerin family. Uh, God will comfort them and their uh, passion of Brother Robert. Need to lifting up the people in Ukraine. Uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, every time, like I said, every time you turn on the TV, you see something about it. Yeah. Hey, if it was us, we'd want them praying for us. So let's pray for them. Mm-hmm. Continue praying for uh, Robert and Becky Hogan, that God will touch them in their bodies. Uh, continue praying for Rodney, Ronnie McBride. He still needs prayer. He, uh, he's still uh, recuperating from an injury. Uh, pray for Sister Judy Lucas' granddaughter in California. She's suffering from anxiety. I uh, pray that God will just uh, take away that anxiety. Mm-hmm. Pray for little uh, Oliver. He has thrush, and pray that he will be healed. Yes. Uh, this little child has God's gift, and we will see him healed from that thrush. Yes. Anybody have a, spoke, uh, un- a spoken request tonight that I didn't get? Remember the Karen family and mm-hmm. yes, remember Sister Blanche Sean's spoken request that she needed guidance on. Also, touch the remember Sister Aldi, God will touch her in prayer tonight. She needs mm-hmm. a touch in her body. Anybody else? Stand, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Mm-hmm. Precious Heavenly Father, we're coming to you again. Who knows whether tonight will be the last time? in the Lord. Psalmist David talking about the way of the righteous in Psalms 1 verse 3 he said he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know it may not prosper in this life but will prosper in eternity. Praise God. Let's continue to worship as Brother Jalen comes ministering song.
It's a new Amen. song, so Amen. don't mess up. Say it. Amen. Touch us, Lord Jesus.
God. He watches over us. Praise the Lord. Jay Hallelujah. Right. Yeah. Let's continue to worship and giving tonight. We're going to have a special yeah. offering tonight. Uh, in the middle, laid on Pastor's heart. We're going to take an offering tonight. The offering we're going to give with Brother Nelson. So let's give a good offering tonight. Yeah. Get our ushers come at this time and see the evening offering. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because giving shall be given. That's right. Amen. Brother Matthew, would you pray over this time of worship? bless you for your faithfulness and giving. Amen. Uh, at this time, Sister Sharon and I, we're going to do like Jalen did. We're going to try a new one out on you. So right. tonight's the uh, time for new songs. Y'all pray for them. Praise the Lord.
just begun to live when you hear him gently whisper saying i forgive well the sweetest words he ever said were i forgive yes in us there was wiped away that i could live well i like the part where he told me about a mansion he would give but the sweetest words he ever said were i forgive oh the sweetest words he ever said were i forgive yes in us there was wiped away that i could live well I like the part where he told about the mansion he would give but the sweetest words he ever said were i forgive but the sweetest words he ever said were i forgive That's the sweetest word you'll ever hear, I forgive. And those who come to the Lord and ask forgiveness of their sins, he will forgive. If they're sincere in their heart, he will forgive. This time we'll turn to service our pastor, Brother Shelton. Praise God. Aren't you glad that you've heard those words, you're forgiven? Jesus, in the word of God, told those that he spoke those words to. He was adamant. He said, go and sin no more. When the Lord forgives you, we are to get out of the sin in business. We're not to continue to practice and live a life of sin. I've had people try to argue that with me and say, well, we all sin every day. We, you know, if you do, you need to get born again. I know it sounds good to that flesh. Well, we all sin every day, but we don't live in the flesh. We walk after the Spirit. And uh, we're supposed to get out of the sin in business when we get born again, when Jesus comes into our heart. He changes our desires. He changes our nature. If you're having a problem with sin, you need to move up. You need to get closer to God. You need to pray more. You need to fast. Do those things to break that, that, that thing that's trying to get a hold of your life. You don't have to just continue on let sin dominate you and control you and rule you. The Bible said, the Apostle Paul said, that sin shall not have dominion over you. That's what the blood does. It liberates us. That's why you need to be sanctified after you got born again. Sanctification deals with that root in there. It'll dig that root out and cause you to live a good, clean, holy life. Can you say amen? I want to testify and brag on the Lord very quickly before I preach. I was at the gas station. I shared with Sister Blanche before the service. I was at the gas station here maybe a couple weeks ago. And uh, there was a lady parked beside me, an older lady. She had a a sign in her car, handicap sign, and you had to wait in the line there. There's so many people there buying gas, and she was on the other side of the pump. So I was facing out. She was coming in this way. I pulled up <clears throat> to pay for mine, and she was waiting behind another car, and the Lord spoke to my heart to fill her tank up with gas. I said, all right, I'll do it. <clears throat> so I got through. I told her, I said, listen, I'm going to fill your tank up with gas. I don't want, when you pull up there, just pull up. You ain't got to get out. You ain't got to do anything but smile and have a wonderful day. So I went over, parked, waiting for her <clears throat> to get up there. And uh, I filled her tank up with gas, told her the Lord to bless her today and go bless somebody else. She was very appreciative. I was happy to have done that. Bless my heart to do that, to give. I got home that afternoon, that evening, <clears throat> went out to my mailbox. There was a check in the mail. I didn't know what it was, but when I opened up, it was a check. It was a refund <clears throat> when I was in the hospital last year. Some of you put me in the hospital. I almost had a heart attack. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I survived it. Thank God. And I paid that hospital bill. And that was last year sometime. And uh, <clears throat> the check was a refund where I had overpaid on that hospital bill. I'm going to tell you something. Hospitals and insurance companies do not give refunds. Is that right? If you overpay, they say, thank God we got somebody else. We got a little extra this time. Nevertheless, it was almost the amount within a few dollars of what I'd put in that woman's tank. I'm sitting there thinking, while I'm putting that gas in, I've already got the money back in my mailbox waiting for me to get back. You can't outgive God, friend. You hold it, and it'll become a curse. You give, and God will bless it. Beyond measure. Amen. <clears throat> I've had arthritis 
I've been not dealing with arthritis for five or six years now, and I'd got it settled in my elbow <clears throat> about two or three years ago, and uh, I've been in chronic pain. That's why uh, at times I don't preach with this because it hurts me to hold that microphone. And I've just kind of learned that's just what it is. I'm in pain and just live with it. And uh, yesterday afternoon, <clears throat> I was home, and I don't know, I just realized my arm's not hurting at all. And I mean, when I say not at all, I mean there's no pain at all in my elbow. And I told Sister Shelton, evidently sometime in this revival this week or sometime this week, the Lord touched my arm, and he's healed my arm. I've, I've been this way for, t uh, doctors have tried things, and it will not get better. It's, it's, it's just agony most days. And God healed me, and God touched me. <clears throat> when I say there's no pain, I mean there's absolutely no pain at all. And I blessed the Lord yesterday. I said, dear God, the Lord's done touched me and healed me. <clears throat> I wasn't even praying for it. But I believe in that revival, God laid his hand on me and touched me. And I want to give him all the glory and all the praise for what he does. We hear enough bragging on the devil. We ought to brag on the goodness of God and what God's doing in our lives. Isaiah chapter 12 tonight. If you'll stand, please. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 12. We'll begin reading in verse 1. Praise the Lord. Enjoy the songs tonight. I like those new songs. Father, thank you. We're blessed to be in the house of God. We're blessed to have our names in the Lamb's book of life. We're blessed to know you and blessed to be known of you. Father, I thank you for your saving grace, the power of the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and washes us. I thank you for your mercy and grace daily in our lives, God. Thank you for the privilege to be back in the house of God tonight. Thank you for helping me preach this morning. God, again, I need your touch tonight, Father. Next little while, just lay your hand on us and help us. I pray, dear God, that you'll just speak to my heart. Let it roll across my lips. Let it find good ground in the hearts of this congregation. Touch those that are watching online now, God. Bless them and meet their needs tonight. Father, draw us to the altar and help us in these orders. And everything that's done, we'll give you the glory and the praise for it all. Lift your hands and thank him tonight. We'll praise you and magnify you and glorify him. He is great and greatly to be praised. Can you, can you shout out loud, amen, to him? Praise God. That means so be it. Let it be so. Let it be true. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 12 and verse 1 reading. The Bible said, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. These are fearful times. I, I, you know, listen to the news a little bit. They're talking about food shortages. Gasoline prices continue to go up. They're talking about, there's been talks of World War III that's been mentioned. We don't know what's going to happen, but the writer said here, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. He said, Therefore, with joy shall we draw, shall, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. My strength, my song, my salvation. With joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Can you give God a hand of praise as you're seated tonight? <clears throat> I want to preach to you tonight. This morning we preached about and talked about God's plan and our salvation and what God did in order for us to be saved, the price that was paid. We talked about that source of salvation being Jesus Christ. He's the only one. And I know people say, well, you're narrow-minded. Well, this book's a narrow book. The path to heaven is a narrow path. Amen. 
We're not, I told Sister Shelton today that we just preached just a pure gospel message this morning in this house. That's how you're going to go to heaven. It's got to be through Jesus Christ. And tonight we want to talk about where that salvation will lead you. Once you get born again, once you've been genuinely saved, now Brother Clendenin said this a number of years ago. He said he believed that 80% of people sitting on church pews had never been born again. I believe that to be true. I believe there are folks that go to church who've never had a crisis experience, a genuine salvation experience that has changed their life. And there's folks who've gone to church who've tried to make themselves better, who tried to be better people, but have never been born from above, never had a change of that nature. The Bible said to make your calling and your election sure. Make sure that you're ready for heaven. I want to preach about where salvation is going to lead you. In our scriptures, we've read to you here tonight, we find that the word salvation is used three different times. I believe that this word salvation is one of the most important words uh, that you will find in the entire Bible. Matter of fact, it's used 164 times throughout the Word of God. In the Old Testament, the word salvation comes from a Hebrew word uh, that means deliverance and victory. If you've been born again, you've been delivered. And if you've been delivered, you've got victory. Our little granddaughter, Lily, she has a, a birthmark on her head. It's a V. Uh, you know, it'll go away as she gets older, uh, but I say it often. She's got V. She's marked for victory. That's what you and I are marked for if we're children of God. We've been delivered from the power of sin. I'm glad that the blood has broken the shackles that had us bound. And now we are a victorious people through Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, it comes from a Greek word, and it means deliverance or preservation and safety. Webster's defines salvation as this, deliverance from the power and effects of sin. And we know this is the reason uh, that Jesus came into this world. We know this is the reason that God sent his son here. The Bible said that plan was already foreordained or preordained before the foundation of the world. Before mankind ever sinned in that garden, God already knew that he would fall. God already had a plan to redeem fallen mankind. God already had a plan of salvation. God sent his son to the world, Jesus Christ. Jesus died on that old rugged cross there at Calvary at Golgotha. We know it was for our salvation. It was for our deliverance, uh, and ultimately it is for our victory. Before we were saved, we were all bound by sin. Uh, you may not have been bound by alcohol. Maybe you were not bound by drugs, but whatever it was in your life, uh, sin had a grip on you. Sin had a hold on you. We were enslaved by sin. We were slaves to the devil. We were without hope, without Jesus Christ. But I'm glad in the fullness of time God sent his son to die on that cross and to shed his blood. I'm glad that he took my place and I'm glad that he took your place. I'm glad that he said, I'll go, I'll die on that cross. I'll be the sacrifice, I'll be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for the salvation of men. The moment that you and I turned to him. The moment we confessed our sins. The moment we repented of our sins. And the moment we said Lord I'm a sinner save me. Come into my life and change my life. I'm telling you it didn't take God five years to save you. It didn't take God five years to work that thing out. The moment you said, Lord, come into my heart, I tell you, he came into your heart, and he made a change in your life. There's not one of us here tonight that can say that when Jesus come in, he didn't change my life for the better. When Jesus came in, the burden of sin rolled away. When Jesus came in, I like what Brother Eddie said. Uh, he didn't cry before he got saved. Uh, but since he got saved, he can't quit crying. 
I pray that he'll always cry that way and be humble and broken before God that way. When Jesus comes into that heart, my friend, it'll flood your soul with joy. It'll liberate you. It'll loose you and let you go free. I remember the Sunday night, even to this day. We were talking about it before service, how our memories have gotten, how I can't remember things like I used to. But I remember that Sunday night in that altar over there when I repented of my sins and I told the Lord these words. I said, Lord, if you would save somebody like me, if you'd save somebody like me, I'll commit my life to you and I'll serve you the rest of my life. I felt the Lord come in. I felt him come into my heart. I felt that change that he made. I felt that old load of sin that I was living under. I felt that load lift off of my life. I, I'm telling you, I went out of there the happiest person I, on the face of this earth. I knew that the Lord uh, had delivered me. I knew the Lord had saved me. Uh, the devil told me after that uh, that it wasn't real. Uh, the Lord didn't save you, but I knew something happened in me uh, that the devil was not going to talk me out of. Uh, he was not going to cheat me out of it. Uh, I got saved. Jesus Jesus knew it, I knew it, and everybody that met me from that day forward, they knew that Jesus made a change in my life. That's the reason he came to this world. That's the reason he died on that cross. He came to save us from our sins. And the moment you repented and accepted him into your heart, this gift of salvation you experienced, this wonderful gift from God, I'm telling you, if you've experienced it, it is the unspeakable gift. It is the most blessed gift uh, that you can receive in your life. Can you say amen? If you're here tonight in this service, if you're watching this service via internet, if you're lost, if you're away from God, if you're not where you need to be with God, uh, I tell you, the Lord will save you. The Lord will forgive you. Uh, the Lord will wash your sins away. Hallelujah to God. Uh, the good news of the gospel is this, uh, that you don't have to continue to live uh, in the condition that you're living in. You don't have to continue walking the road that you're walking. Uh, Jesus Christ is seeking to save uh, those that are lost. If you're lost, if you're undone, if you're away from God, before this service is over, before we say the final amen, Jesus can come into your heart. Jesus can forgive you of your sins. Jesus can change your life. And you can say, there's a change been made in me. I'm not what I used to be, but I am now what I am. By the grace of God Almighty, Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. Hallelujah. He is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. It'll be the greatest thing that'll ever happen in any person's life. I know I allude to Jalen often, but Jalen's a special person in my life. I know where Jalen come from. I know what, what Jalen was bound up in. I know some things about him. And to see him up here singing tonight, you could give me a million dollars and not make me as happy as seeing this young man up here doing something for God. I said, you could give me a million dollars and I wouldn't be as happy as seeing him up here doing something for the Lord. I look over there and see Brother Charlie and Sister Sharon I don't really know about Brother Charlie's story, but I know Sister Sharon's. I, she got, you know, in this church over here, came back, got things right with God, got uh, filled with the Holy Ghost in that old building over there 20-some years ago. And, and to see them up here doing something for God. Somebody said, I can't do anything. Everybody can do something for the Lord. If you just try, God will use you. Uh, if you just try, you can be a blessing to somebody. If you just try, God will lay his hand upon you, and God will touch you, and God will anoint you, and God will use it for his glory. It will be a blessing uh, in somebody's life. Amen. When we look at the doctrine of salvation in the Bible, we talked about this this morning. We find that salvation is responsible for moving people from the place uh, that they are in. 
We look about that word salvation in the Bible and we find that it brought Israel out of the bondage of Egypt, brought Jonah out of a well, it brought David out of a pit, it brought Saul out of a lost condition. Later his name would be changed to Paul. I believe that this gift of salvation it will bring every sinner out of the darkness of sin into the marvelous light of the Son of God. Sister Tracy, you know what this world needs today? It's not more churches. There's a church on almost every corner. A lady told me today after the service, she said, I'm glad I was born in the Bible Belt here in this, this part of the country, this part of the world. It is called the Bible Belt. We don't need more churches today. What we need is more Christians. We need people that are walking in the light. Not just people that profess, but people that really possess Jesus Christ. People that have a light in their life. People that are walking as Jesus Christ walked. You want to know what made the difference in my life? I saw people that loved God. I saw people that served Him. I saw people that went through some hard places, went through some difficult times, but they never gave up on God, and God never gave up on them. It impacted in my life as a sinner I saw people that were hypocrites I remember going to church as a young boy going home with some of our cousins some of our family and thinking that the way their mom and daddy is living I know that's not right I know what they do in church and I know that what I see them do at home is not right but I was also surrounded by some people that love God people that were sold out to the Lord we don't need to build more churches and bigger churches. We just need to get people born again that will be brought out of darkness and that light will shine in this world and people can know what real Christianity is all about today. Salvation brings every sinner out of darkness and brings them into the light of Jesus Christ. Salvation is going to lead you somewhere, my friend. I want you to notice here tonight some of the places that salvation leads. First of all, salvation is going to lead you to heaven. For that, everybody in this house ought to say amen. Salvation will lead you to eternal life in heaven. Salvation, this gift of God, if you'll walk with the Lord, if you messed up, the best thing to do is get it right. If you fumble along the way, don't lay there and quit. Dear God, ask the Lord to forgive you. Jump right back up and get right back in the race and keep right on running. Can you say amen? I'm telling you, friend, that salvation, if you'll walk with Jesus Christ, if you'll live your life for him, if you'll serve him, when you breathe your last breath, it may be difficult now. There may be challenges now. It may get rocky and hard at times. But when you breathe your final breath and you open up your eyes in heaven, it's going to be worth every mile of my God. I said it'll be worth every mile mile of this journey uh, you'll be glad you kept running uh, you'll be glad you kept living for the Lord uh, you'll be glad you didn't go back uh, you didn't lay down you didn't surrender uh, you'll be glad that you made it home uh, and to hear him say a job well done uh, thou good and faithful servant uh, enter thou into the joys of thy Lord you'll be glad when you get to heaven You'll be glad that you made it there. I tell you, friend, salvation will lead us to heaven. It is salvation that unlocks the doors to the kingdom of God. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to be saved. Hallelujah. That's elementary. That's very simple. To go there, you've got to be saved. To go to hell, then you'll be unsaved. But if you give your life to Jesus Christ... He'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. And if you'll abide in him, he will abide in you. And when it comes time to close your eyes in death, and we all will, 
when it comes time to close your eyes in death you don't have to be afraid you don't have to fear when you breathe that final breath you're going to open up your eyes in heaven and you're going to be with King my God you're going to be with King Jesus it'll be worth it all after a while child of God Salvation will lead you to heaven. It unlocks the doors to that glorious place. Here's the dangerous thing about it. You can go to church all your life and still go to hell. You can do church things all of your life and still go to hell. You can have positions in the church. You can give the tithe. You can give to missions. You can do all the religious things. You can teach a class. You can preach the Bible. You can do all those things and still die lost in your sins. But the only way you can go to heaven is through salvation. It is through Jesus Christ. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. There has to be a divine work that takes place in that heart. It goes beyond the emotions. There are people, I've watched it happen down through the years, Brother Charlie. I've watched people go to the orders. They got emotional. They cried. They got up even feeling better. But they never had that divine impartment of that new nature. How do you know? Because it didn't last. I said it didn't last. A few weeks down the road, they're already back out of church. They're already back in that same old lifestyle. You say, what happened to them? They didn't get born again. I said they didn't get born again when Jesus comes in he will completely turn your world and your life upside down inside out he'll change everything about you I know that he's working on us but when he comes in there's going to be a change a transformation that takes place in your life salvation that being born again that new birth Delivered from the penalty and power of sin. It will lead you to heaven. When you get born again now, you have the keys to the kingdom of God. And the Bible said it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I would encourage you tonight, don't turn loose of it. Don't let go of it. Don't lay it down. Don't walk away from it. It is a, it is a pearl of great price. It is worth more than riches of this world. It's worth more than anything in this life. The Bible said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? And what would a man give in exchange for his soul? If you've got this pearl of great price, if you've been born again, it is priceless in your life. It is the greatest gift you'll ever receive in this life or in the life to come. So hold on to it. The Bible said, hold fast to what you have and let no man take thy crown. If you've got this gift, don't you give it up for your spouse. Else. Don't you give it up for your children. Don't you give it up for the devil. Don't you give it up for this world. You hold on to it until you cross the finish line and you make it to heaven. You make it to your eternal home. Hallelujah to God. This gift of God that God has blessed us with is of great value in your life. Because Jesus paid the ultimate price for you to have it. Jesus gave the all so that you and I could experience this great gift. It's kept Brother Baker 62 years. Is that right, Brother? It's kept him for 62 years. Some of you, I don't know. He may be the, he may be the one serving the Lord the longest in this church tonight. I don't know that. Maybe somebody been serving him longer. But I believe if you would ask Brother Baker, he's a good man. He's one of the best men I've ever met in my life. I guarantee you that. And I'd say it behind his back as I would to his face. He's a good man. He loves God. And he lives right. Amen. But you could ask him and he would tell you, uh, yes, it's been hard at times. Yes, there's been times that I've wept. Yes, there's been times that I've struggled. Yes, there's been times that the road's been rocky. 
There's been times it has been difficult, uh, but you also could ask him, has it been worth it? Uh, and he'd say, worth every mile of it. Hallelujah. It's been worth every mile. Uh, it is the greatest possession that we have, uh, the keys to everlasting life, uh, the keys to the kingdom of God, uh, and salvation uh, will lead you to heaven. Uh, so don't give up, child of God. Uh, don't entertain the lies of the devil. Uh, hold on to what God's given you. Uh, and one day in the by and by, you're going to be in that eternal home and it will be worth it all. The Bible said, Jesus said, dear God, Jesus said in John 14, 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Somebody made mention this week that Brother Shortridge preached like he did all week. He's 75 years young. And he never breathed hard the whole time. I watched him. And some of you made mention that say, man, says, Tina, here I am just going to be 51 here in a few weeks, and I can't hardly get my breath. I got a treadmill now, and it's helping me. He, man, I thought that man preached that hard, and I never did one. I saw him sweat. Boy, he did some sweating. But I never seen him trying to get air. Hey, man, you pray for me, I'll get all I can get. Hey, man, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Who wouldn't want a mansion in heaven? I said, who wouldn't want a mansion over there? He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there ye may be also. I realize we're living in a world of trouble, but the Bible tells us because of this gift of God, we don't have to be troubled. We don't have to have a nervous breakdown. We don't have to fall all the pieces. He said, don't let your heart be troubled because we realize this old world's not my home. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're like Brother Abraham. We're looking for a city that has foundation. Uh, whose builder and maker uh, is God Almighty. Uh, we're going to be like Brother Enoch. Uh, one day soon we're going to be walking with God uh, and we're going to be not in this world any longer. Uh, we're going to step over into glory land uh, and there we'll forever uh, be with the Lord of glory. Somebody give him praise in this house tonight. You believe in God, believe also in me. We're not to be troubled because this world is not my home. All of this is temporary. All of this is fading fast. I thought about it here recently. I'm getting ready to be 51. I know I look 75. Some of you sound like you said amen. I'm going to preach at you. I look like I'm about 28 or 29 or 30. I was getting ready this evening, and I said, dear Lord, who in the world is that man in the mirror looking back at me? I've been doing that more here lately, it seemed like. Y'all did such a wonderful job fixing that, that building up over there. I said, let's leave it for a little bit. We ain't, we ain't trying to be no idolatry here, but I love seeing those old pictures when we were young and, you know, how, the, how we've changed through the years. You don't believe the change, just, you know, your appearance, the way you look. Just go back and look at some old pictures just a few years ago. The only person had in Sister Garen. Look at her fifth grade picture, and that's what she looks like right there. She still looks like her fifth grade picture. <laughs> Amen. She don't ever age. She always looks exactly the same. I told Angela she's kind of the same way. I need to be drinking some of that water over there toward Trinity, that area where they're coming from. Get in some of that good water and eat some of those, eat some of those, those uh, duck, not the duck eggs. We don't eat them. We save them. We, we bring them to life, but eat some of those chicken eggs. Amen. I believe it makes a difference in their life. I'm telling you, the Lord, time is going by so fast. And I thought recently, Brother Zach, you know, 50 years is gone just like that. But even if you live to be 100 years old, it's going to be just like that. You're gone. But eternity will be forever and forever. I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is this. You're going to be glad you serve the Lord when you leave here. 
You're going to be glad you got saved and you live right. You're going to be glad when you wanted to quit, when you thought it'd be easier to give up. You're going to be glad that you got back up and you kept running. All of this is going to be gone very quickly. We're going to breathe our last breath. But when we get over there, Mama, we're going to shout throughout the ages. We're going to sing a song that the angels cannot sing. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I realize it may get hard now, but Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. I'm preparing a place for you. And when that place is ready, I'm going to come again. I'm going to receive you unto myself. And where I am there, you may be also. Somebody say amen. Let not your heart be troubled. We're pilgrims and strangers in this old world. But we're looking for that city that's got foundation. We're looking for a place called heaven and salvation is going to lead us there. If you've been saved, Jesus is your Savior and Jesus is the Lord of your life. The, the difficulty of trying to serve God is trying to serve Him but not make Him Lord. Matter of fact, it's impossible to live for Jesus and not make Him the Lord of your life. That's why people struggle like they do. That's why people are, you know, a continual struggle. There's things that they have not made the Lord the ruler over in their life. Things that they're still trying to hang on to. Things that they're still dealing with. But if, if you and I would once and for all, how many still believe in sanctified living? You believe in sanctification. There are things that are in our lives that are sinful uh, that they've gotta be, we've got to be separated from. Things that we have got to cut ties with. Listen to me. If you're struggling, if it's hard to serve the Lord every day, I want to just say this to you, and I'm not trying to be ugly here, but serving the Lord is not difficult. Serving God is not hard. What makes it hard is when we're not fully surrendered the way that we ought to be. When there's that tug of war thing going on. I'm telling you, when you have decided, uh, I'm going to leave everything behind, uh, everything that hinders me, uh, until you do that, you continue to struggle. But when you come to that conclusion, uh, I'm going to leave everything behind that I'm struggling with, that hinders me, uh, that slows me down. Uh, I'm going to cut ties with it. Uh, I'm going to separate myself from it. Uh, I'm telling you, you know what victory is all about. Uh, you know what victory living is all about. Some of you are struggling unnecessarily. If you would give more time to prayer, if you would spend more time on your knees, it will help you. I know, I know, I, I've counseled people, and they say to me, they say, I know, I need to pray more. There's your problem. If you know it, fix it. If you know you're not praying like you should, fix that problem. Don't wait for me to preach about it. Don't wait for the Sunday school teacher to teach about it. If you know you're not giving that time in prayer every day, today's the day to fix that. Right now's the time to get it right. Commit yourself to that prayer life. Get back in the Word of God. I'm telling you, when you start feeding that spiritual man, that old man will lay down. You can cover him up. You'll grow in the grace of God, and you'll be able to walk home with Jesus Christ. If you're not committed that way, you're going to continue to struggle until you wear out. Until you say, I don't want to struggle with this no more. I'm just not going to serve God any longer. There are people that's been born again, really got saved. But they got tired of the struggle day in and day out. I'm not anybody. I'm no better than you. I'm no different than you. I've got to pray just like you've got to pray. I've got to study my Bible daily just like you've got to study your Bible daily. I've got to live consecrated just like you've got to live consecrated. I've got to do what I know is right by the Word of God. If I didn't do that, I'm just telling you, I wouldn't be here tonight. Forget being in the pulpit. I wouldn't be in church here tonight. I wouldn't be serving the Lord. You and I have to make that commitment. I've got a gift here. There's an enemy that wants that gift. There's an enemy that wants that life that's inside of you. The devil don't care if we go to church. The devil don't care if we shout. 
The devil don't care if we kick up our heels. The devil don't care if we sing in the choir. The devil don't care if we play music as long as we have no life in us. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, that the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy him. But I am come that they might have life. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about victory. We're talking about freedom from bondage and freedom from sin. I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The devil's after that life in you. He wants to steal that joy. He wants to steal that hope. He wants to steal that gift of God. It's up to you and I, my friend, to fight for it and to hold on to it and to press in to keep it. That if you get serious about it if you realize I can't live without Jesus I can't live without salvation and I'm going to fight for it God will give you the victory and you'll march on with Jesus Christ somebody raise your hands and praise him tonight my God my God I feel the Holy Ghost helping me tonight There is an enemy of our soul. I promise you this is not how I plan to preach this message. There is an enemy of our soul. He don't care if you're religious. He don't care if you sit on the church pew. This is one of the finest ladies that I know on this earth. I look at her and my heart just feels love. This is a good lady, not just because she's my mama, but she is my mama. She brought me in this world, and she don't want to take me out of it. Maybe she did when I was younger. This is a praying woman right here. She's a prayer. I have confidence in her prayers. She's one of the reasons I got saved, because she prayed for me, Brother Dean. You pray for your children. You don't ever stop praying for your children. God save me. God will save your children if you'll pray for them. If you'll keep believing that promises of God's word, if you'll keep holding on to those promises, the devil doesn't care if we go to church. He don't care if we do all the religious things. Listen, churches are full of those kind of people that do religious things, but they don't have this gift. I wish I could convey to you, I, I wish I could convey it in words, what it, what it means to have this gift of salvation. I wish I could just convey it to you in such a manner. I, I know some of you know what I'm preaching about. Maybe some of you don't. But it is priceless. There's not anything in this world greater than salvation. I know you say, we're preacher. You're supposed to say that you're a preacher. I'm telling you because that's the Bible I have from the Word of God, but also from experience. It is the greatest thing in your life uh, is to be saved. My grandfather said it. Uh, the greatest testimony anybody can have uh, is to stand up and say, uh, I've been saved. Uh, it is the gift of God. Uh, it is the greatest gift that we can know. Uh, that's why the devil fights so hard uh, to keep people from being saved. Uh, he don't want you to have eternal life there in heaven. Uh, he don't want you to live for God. Uh, he's a miserable thing. Uh, and he he wants you to be miserable too. He knows he's going to hell and he wants to drag everybody that he can there with him. I want to tell you something, friend. Jesus Christ has given us a gift. God sent his son and he paid the price and this gift of salvation is worth leaving everything behind and holding on to it and living for Jesus until you make it to that eternal place. There's nothing. <laughs> Woo! Oh, God. Do you ever see people? Sister, come on, get ready to play. Do you ever see people that you know are lost, that you know that need salvation, and you think, I, maybe my think is different from yours, but I think sometimes I wish I could just take what I have in my heart and just push it through to theirs. I wish they could know what I know. Not just feel what I feel because I don't always feel saved. Do you? 
but know by faith what I know. That I'm a child of God, Sister Chester. I wish I could take what's in my heart and just push it right through to theirs. And let them know how wonderful salvation is. I told you this morning that men have tried to add to this thing. Men have tried to change it. Men have tried to make it more difficult. But to come to Jesus sincerely and humbly and be broken before the Lord and confessing, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm lost. Lord, I need help. If you would save somebody like me, somebody not worth anything, somebody bound up in sin, somebody on their way to hell, but if you'd save somebody like me, I'll commit my ways to you. I'll commit my life to you. All that I am, I'll give in service to you. I'll live for you the rest of my days on this earth. Whether I live to be 100 years old or I don't reach 51, I want to know that I gave it all to Jesus Christ and that I lived for him and I loved him and I served him because I recognize what he's given me it's worth more than all the money in the world it's worth more than all the fame it's worth more than everything the world over many times over it is a gift of God hallelujah it is a gift of God this gift of salvation that God has blessed us with. Please don't play games with it. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let him discourage you to a place that you're willing to give up your eternity. You're willing to give up your eternal soul. For what? So you can feel better? How are you going to feel better? If the devil's got you so discouraged, you're ready to give up on God, how are you going to think you're going to feel better when you do that? This gift that God's blessed us with, 62 years, Brother Becker's kept you. It'll keep him every mile till he gets home. This gift, Sister Angela, is valuable. It's priceless. It's a great gift, Brother Zach. Changed that man's life. Took him off of drugs, <laughs> alcohol, put him back in his right mind. Oh, what God can do in a person's life. Put Sister Tina in his life to try him every day. I pick on both of them. I love both of them. Put Sister Tina in his life teaching patience. She was bound up in sin. Not as bad as many, but worse than some others. But then the Lord changed her life, got a hold of her. Come in, made a difference. Anybody in this church, been in this church any time at all, can know this, this good brother right here, know that Jesus has made a change in his life. I told Sister Shelton, you want to see the new birth experience? Look at this man's life right here. He's not perfect, but God's working on him, just like he's working on us. God's brought him a mighty long way in a short period of time. This life is so quick, so fast. I was thinking, yes, they stand, please. Sister Albright, play softly, please. Ah, do you know how much I've enjoyed preaching today? Oh, gracious. April the 5th, Granny would have been 89 years young. She lived 88 years. And I thought when she died, when she left and went into eternity, how quick that's over. That's over. Her life is gone here now. 88 years is nothing in this life. That happens fast. You wake up and you say, where in the world did the years go? How in the world did I get this age that quick? 
But now she's in eternity in heaven there forever. The Bible said to be with the Lord a day is that you've been there a thousand years. And to be with the Lord a thousand years is only as just a day as if you just started. Our minds can't understand heaven. We, we can preach about it and try to make it as real as we can. The Spirit of God can, can touch us and, and make it real to us that we believe it's there. But our minds can't grasp what it is, how it's going to be. But what I can tell you is everything I've read in this book about that place ought to make everybody on planet Earth want to go there more than anything else. We can't comprehend how bad hell is. We can preach about it. We can read about it. The, the Spirit of God can make it real to us. But nobody can understand it till you get there. But what I read in this book about hell ought to cause everybody living and breathing on planet Earth to say, I'm not going to that place. I want to go to heaven. And the only way to go to heaven is through salvation. And salvation will lead you there if you'll live your life for the Lord. The very thing that hindered you from being sold out to God, if that, that very thing keeps you out of heaven over and over and over throughout eternity, you will wish again and again and again that I had left that behind. You know what the world needs to see? Christians today. Not just, not just professors, but possessors of that life. Possessors of genuine salvation. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to ask you tonight, I don't know your hearts. If you'd say, Brother Shelton, I'm not ready for heaven. I preached at a nursing home a number of years ago. And I just preached the simple gospel. When that service was over, an elderly lady came up to me and she said, Preacher, I thought I was saved until I heard you preach. Now I'm not so sure. I said, then let's pray. Let's make sure. You can know. You can know in your heart. Based on the word of God. Not a feeling. But by faith. That I've been born again. If you're not ready for heaven, I want you to come to these altars tonight. They're open for you.